Hey guys, it's Chandler with Utah Trikes, back with another tech video. Today we're going to talk about death wobble. We're going to go over some of the symptoms of death wobble, some common at-home repairs that you can do, and we'll get into some more in-depth advanced repairs if that's what's needed. So it must be obvious, you clicked on this video, you might be experiencing some of these symptoms. Some of the symptoms can be the trike is tracking weird, it feels a little hard to control, especially at speed, it's hard to control. It just doesn't feel like it once was. So let's dive right in. We'll pull a trike in here and take a look at some of the symptoms and direct you what needs to be repaired. First thing we wanna check is gonna be the tightness of your wheel, checking that your axle is tight. It seems like a simple thing, but it can cause a lot of problems. Here on the cat track, we have a quick release. Some other models will have a quick release. Some will have just a straight up axle with a nut and bolt. Just depends on the type of model you have. So we're just gonna check this, make sure that this axle is tight, and then make sure that there's no play in the wheel forward and back. So here we have the CXS. This axle is a little bit different than cat track and AZUB. This will be the same on the EcoTad as well. You have a big axle nut right here. We're gonna check that with the open end wrench. Make sure that this is tight. And then you have a dust cap. You'll wanna remove this dust cap with an eight millimeter Allen wrench. And then there is a five millimeter Allen wrench bolt under there. Make sure that's tight as well. And then reinstall your dust cap. So checking the axle on the AZUB is a lot like the CXS. It just has one bolt here. Tighten that up. While we're here at the wheel, the next thing I like to check is just the spoke tension. Just give them a good squeeze, make sure there's no loose spokes, make sure none are broken. They should have good tension all the way around. And this goes for every track model. Another good practice is to check your rear wheel. Some will have a bolt through axle or a skewer axle. Let's make sure that that's tight. You wouldn't think that the rear wheel would have any effect on the front, but it does. Especially with a track, you have one wheel in the back, it's gonna act like a rudder. So if this is out of alignment in any way, or it's loose, it might cause your trike to track funny. So check your back wheel as well. The next thing I like to check is especially on suspension, just double check all these bolts are tight, make sure there's no loose components on your uh, suspension. It'll do the same thing if you have any play in any hardware, it's gonna cause more excessive play in the wheels. You wanna make sure that all your suspension components are tight. So just, just do a quick bolt check, make sure that everything's snug. Okay. The next thing we're going to check is the tension of the headsets. If you have any play in your spindle, it's also going to add to the death wobble. It's going to add any slop anywhere is going to add to the death wobble. So the way you can check this, sit in your trike and hold the brakes and rock back and forth and you'll see this headset cap. If that's moving at all, your headsets are too loose. So for most models, you're going to have a handlebar clamp with a top cap. You're gonna to wanna to loosen up the handlebar bolts on the spindle. And then you're gonna tighten this top bolt. And you wanna just snug it up so that this moves freely still. And then check it again, hold your brake, rock it back and forth, and make sure that this cap's not moving. That way we know the headset's tight. And then don't forget to tighten up your handlebar. So checking the headset tension is the same as the cow trike in AZUB, but with the CXS with suspension spindles, there will be a little bit of play you'll notice, like a tiny, like a millimeter of play. That's just how the CXSs are. Um, there's no problem with it. It's just the design of the spindle. So if you're feeling that little bit of play, that's normal. We're just focusing on the headset cap right here. You want to make sure that that's not moving while you have the brake locked. 
So if you've done all these first steps and everything checks out good, but you're still getting some wobble, we're gonna move on to some more advanced diagnosis. We're gonna start with the toe alignment. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do, I like to set up, put the valve stems at the top and lock your brakes if you have locking brakes. That way all the spokes are lined up. Now we're gonna measure spoke to spoke on the front of the wheel and then spoke to spoke on the back of the wheel and that's gonna give us our toe alignment. And make sure that you have the tape measure level with the ground when you measure. And then put a mental note of what size it is. And then compare it to the back. And this one, obviously, fresh out of the showroom, perfect. But we'll uh, show you how to adjust it from here if it's off. I like to get it within one or two millimeters. And if you have to have it towed in or towed a millimeter or two off, make sure it's towed in so the front is narrower. It'll help track the track better. But try to get as close as you can to equal front and back. So with this trike in particular, cat trike, it is a direct steering. So it has the steering attached to the spindle with a single tie rod. So this is gonna be an easier one to align. You're gonna need two wrenches. One wrench will hold the tie rod. The other wrench is to loosen the lock nut on the tie rod. So go ahead and loosen the lock nuts. You want to loosen both sides. Now that you have the jam nuts loose, the lock nuts on the tie rod, you can twist the tie rod forward and back and that's going to change the toe alignment. So you're going to align it and then check it again with your tape measure and rotate the tie rod until you get an equal amount. Double check our measurement. Take a mental note. Compare it to the back. And now we can adjust it until they're equal. We'll double check the front again. Now we're on. So once you got it square, you're gonna take your wrenches again. Make sure to hold the tie rod in place when you tighten the lock nuts, the jam nuts. Otherwise it will change your alignment. I like to tighten one side first and then double check my measurement again to make sure it didn't move. Perfect. Now we can tighten the other side down. There you go, and double check it one more time, just to make sure it didn't move. And there we are, perfect alignment. So when aligning the CXS, the steps are the same, but with the design of the spindle and the geometry of the CXS suspension, having the tie rod below the spring, it will add some fluctuations in your alignment as it cycles. As it goes up and down, the toe will change as you go. So when you align the CXS, you need to have your rider weight. So either you need to align it while you're sitting in it or have somebody that's equal weight to you or have equal weight in the seat while you align it. If this seems like a lot of work, we do have an upgrade kit called the CXS Ackerman Arm Compensators, which essentially moves the tie rod above the spring, which eliminates the fluctuation in alignment as you go over bumps. We have a video of that, link in the description. So a little trick I like to do if you're struggling with the alignment or it seems like the tie rod ends are different lengths and it's not loosening equally, I like to take the tie rod off of the trike, loosen the jam nuts and thread the heim joints all the way into the tie rod as far as they'll go so they're equal, bolt it back on the trike and then do your alignment from there. That way you have equal distance that both tie rods are moving instead of one moving more than the other. So if you're having trouble with it, start there then do your alignment after that. So when it comes to indirect steering, you have two tie rods, so it's a little bit different process to align it. A lot of it's the same. You're gonna measure spoke to spoke on your 
front half of the wheel, spoke to spoke on the back half of the wheel. But you're going to be rotating two tie rods and you want to make sure you're rotating them equally so that you're not pulling one wheel more than the other. I recommend when doing these just start with taking the tie rods off and threading the heim joints all the way into the tie rod and then putting it all back together. That way you know both sides are the same length. And then as you adjust your alignment, measuring front and back, twist these equally. So one turn on this, one turn on that, or doing it with both hands if you can do it. And then from there, lock it down one side, measure it, and then lock the other side down, double check again, make sure you got it square. The other thing that's different with indirect steering is you'll have essentially a third spindle here in the middle of the frame that your handlebar attaches to. So once you get your toe alignment square, you wanna make sure the handlebars are straight when the wheels are straight. And if you need to adjust that, down here, you'll see there's a head tube clamp. You'll loosen this up and you can rotate it just like a handlebar on a cat trike. Make sure that the handlebar is square with the wheels. When the wheels are forward, the handlebars are straight. It's more common that you guys will have a tape measure in your toolbox, but if you're like me and like tools, Catrike has this pretty cool tool called the Calibro alignment tool. It basically works the same as a tape measure, but it's more of a visual size. You can set, line it up with the front, mark your distance, and then you can compare it front to back to get a perfect alignment without having to remember a measurement or hold the tape measure by yourself. This is really easy to use by yourself. Um, we'll put a link in the description for this if this is something you're looking for. So if you've gotten to this point, everything's checking out good, your alignment is square, and you're still having some wobble, we might need to dive a little deeper, um, starting with the headset bearings or bushings, depending on your model of trike. Um, most trikes are gonna be about the same. They all kind of have the same design, aside from HP. They have quite the suspension setup on there. So if you have an HP, you might want to take it to a good shop that's experienced with HP. They're a little more in depth, a little more advanced, a little much for the amateur bike mechanic. If that's something you guys want to see in the future, we, we can make that video. Um, there's just a lot that goes into it. So be aware, it's not going to be as simple as the headsets on this trike. So here we're working on a cat trike. The difference with cat trike is instead of having a bearing on top and bottom, they have a bearing on the bottom and a bushing on top, which acts like a bearing. So the steps of this is gonna be the same for any other trike model. This one's just gonna look a little different. We're gonna start with removing this upper bolt. Then we're gonna loosen the handlebar clamp. And if you have it in a trike stand, you'll want to support it somehow. I'm using my leg here to hold it because once this handlebar is loose, the wheel, the spindle may fall out. So now that we have the handlebar out of the way, you can just slide the spindle down until you can remove the top dust cap. And then you'll see cat trike has a spacer here, but most other trikes will have a race, an upper bearing race. And now you can remove the bushing. So that's the upper bushing that I was talking about. Pretty much the same shape as a bearing. They just use a bushing. And then you can drop the spindle all the way out and you can remove the lower bearing here. Cat trike has a lower bearing race that's built into the spindle. So this one's a little bit more difficult to replace, but it still can be replaced if needed. Other trike models will have just a race that just slides on and off. So there's your bearing and race. So at times you may need to remove your tie rod to get the spindle all the way out. As long as you don't mess with the lock nuts on the tie rod, it's not gonna change your alignment. So if you just did your alignment, don't worry, it's not gonna mess it up. Once you get it off, then you'll slide the new bearings in place and then just put it all back together. Just reverse how we did it. So you got a lower bearing race, bearing, then you put the spindle into the frame and then you'll put your upper bearing or bushing back in, spacer or upper bearing race, and then the top dust cap, and then your handlebar. If you have a trike that has indirect steering, you won't have a handlebar here, but there'll still be a clamp and possibly some spacers and then a top cap. And then tighten down the headset. Same as before, we want that tension to be no play in the headset but still loose enough that you can turn the handlebar freely. 
is there. And then don't forget to tighten up your handlebars. So here on AZUB with the indirect steering, there's no handlebar here, but you'll have a couple of different accessory options. This one has a fender mount clamp. It'll either be a clamp or you'll have some spacers, but this it's the same thing as a cat trike. You loosen this clamp, tighten down the headset, tighten the clamp back up. Replacing the bearings on the CXS is very similar to cat trike. We in fact have a video of that where we upgrade the headsets to our Revolution upgraded headsets. So if that's something you're looking forward, check out the video. Um, and that also explains in depth how to replace the bearings on the CXS. So after all this, there's just one more big thing I like to check out and that's for any frame damage. If there's any cracks or broken parts of the frame, obviously that's adding more slop in the frame, the suspension, that's gonna cause it not to handle as it should. The main places I like to look are right here on your cruciform where that meets the head tube. Check for cracks around this. Check for cracks here on the cruciform that meets the main frame right here under your seat. Check for any cracks, any damages, any broken parts. Another good place to look for damage is on your rear. Just like I mentioned before about the rear wheel being like a rudder. If there's any damages back here, if you have a suspension, if your suspension's coming loose, or if you have a broken swing arm, um, if the wheel's not set in the dropouts properly, it can cause the trike to rudder and not be as stable as it should be. If you do find some frame damage, please let us know. Especially if you bought it from us, if you're within your warranty, we can work with the manufacturer to get your replacement parts and get you back on the road as soon as possible. Well guys, I hope this video helps. If you're still having trouble with death wobble, we recommend bringing it to us if you can, or if you got a reputable trike shop near you, they can diagnose it further. I mean, we're the experts. We see these trikes all the time. We know what to look for. So if you're still having trouble, bring it in, email us, call us, we can help you out from there. Um, if you like this video and you want to see more tech videos like this or you have some ideas, please let us know. We also have a whole channel full of other tech tip videos if you want to wrench more on your trike and get some more advice. Anyway, relax, spin fast, ride trikes.